taking place in discrete lumps in quantum, in, in quanta, plural. Okay? Now, uh, Einstein's uh, further uh, radical step was to say, uh, no, 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 that's, that's not what, that is not what's happening. Um, in Einstein's view, the energy of the light was also quantized. Now that contradicted what Planck was saying. Planck and everybody, all physicists then, uh, were assuming that the, the um, light uh, could take on any value, continuously, you know, could have continuously changing energy levels. And, and Einstein was saying, no, light itself is quantized. And uh, so when the light uh, hits the matter, uh, the light is hitting the matter in, in discrete lumps of energy. So, uh, so Einstein, you said you could look on this energy uh, of light as a kinds of bullets, like, like, like little bullets, little lumps of energy, uh, of light energy and hence the word photon. Uh, anything ending in O-N means a particle of some kind, like a neutron, proton, electron, nucleon, meson, boson, fermion, graviton, many. They, they all just mean particle, some kind of particle, dot, 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 O-N. And phot, you know, from light. So, literally, particle of light. Now, that was a radical idea in 1905, okay? So, uh, so Einstein's light bullets, or photons, and uh, Einstein came up with a famous formula, and eventually um, he got the Nobel Prize for this, not for his relativity. That was too, uh, too radical for a lot of physicists. They couldn't accept it, because it's so uh, counterintuitive. You know, once time changes, as you, uh, if you're moving relative to somebody else, mass changes, and Lengths sh shrink, and oh, a lot of a lot of physicists couldn't buy that. So they rejected giving him a Nobel Prize for his relativity, but they did give him one for, for this. So Einstein's idea is that uh, the he, he took Planck's formula. Uh, Planck, Planck was saying that um, the the quantum of energy exchanged between uh, the light and the matter. Uh, was proportional to the frequency of the light. And that little quantum of energy that got exchanged between the light and the matter, uh, E, E for energy, was proportional to the frequency. And then the constant, you know, so E is proportional to F, but to, to make it a, an equation, uh, E equals some constant times F. That constant became known later as Planck's constant. And here it is, here, here's, here's a, H, uh, Y. Why H? I really thought about that before. Huh. Interesting. I have to look at it. Anyway, H. Why isn't it called P? No. P for Planck. So uh, here's Planck's famous formula. The, that quantum of energy is uh, proportional to the frequency and it's actually equal to some constant times the frequency and that constant is Planck's constant, H. All right? So Einstein took this idea and said the photons themselves have this energy. Uh, so so uh, a, f a photon, a light bullet, uh, of frequency f, you know, it's oscillating at a certain frequency, the electromagnetic field, right? that's what light is, it's, uh, light is a, a wave of electromagnetic energy that, that comes out of uh, Maxwell's uh, equations in the 1860s. Right? Anyway. So uh, the energy of the photon, E, is just HF, okay? And, and then Einstein was thinking about the so-called photoelectric effect. What's that? Uh, you shine light uh, on a metal, and if the frequency of the light is not high enough, uh, electrons do not come out. They're not emitted. But as soon as the... Uh, and, and it depends on the metal, what the, that, that threshold frequency is. So if you then uh, increase the frequency of the light shining on the metal, uh, then electrons will uh, start coming out. And that's called a photo, photoelectric effect. So electric in the sense of electrons coming out and photo you know, sending light, shining light on the metal. And uh, as you keep increasing the frequency, uh, the energy of the, 
uh, electrons coming out uh, goes up linearly with the frequency. So, uh, so you, and Einstein interpreted that to mean that uh, here's, here's an electron in the metal, let's say, and a photon, uh, you know, bullet of light, uh, hit, hits the electron and knocks it out of the atom, and then it, the electron flies out and, and out, out of the surface of the metal. Okay? So if you increase the frequency of your photon, so in other words the photon has more energy, it can give the electron more kick, right? give the electron more momentum. And so the energy of the electron coming out goes up as the frequency of your photon goes up. Okay? So, so you're imagining now the photoelectric effect as a kind of uh, kick uh, between two particles. And you've got the electron, it's a particle, right? uh, highly localized in a sense, and the photon is a bullet, also highly localized. The photon hits the electron, gives it a kick, and the electron comes out of the surface. That's the photoelectric effect. All right. Uh, well, I could jump, I could, well, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but like the next, uh, one of the next big uh, um, ideas to come out. So, was uh, a French guy, uh, uh, an aristocrat, a uh, prince, in fact, uh, de Broglie, uh, I'm pronouncing it in the French way. Um, now, he's, he's famous for taking uh, Einstein's idea. Uh, Einstein, in the photoelectric effect, Einstein was saying that these uh, light waves behave like particles. Now, that, that sounds strange, again, quantum mechanics. Uh, par particles are, sorry, waves, by their nature, uh, have a kind of waving motion, right? They, they sort of oscillate like this, and, and hence sort of spread out. A wave, a wave's not a point, a wave sort of spread out, yes? That's the nature of a wave. Whereas Einstein was saying that um, uh, there are bullets of light. Uh, photons. Well, that's sort of like particle, like you know, point, point light. So you've got this sort of contradiction, and uh, it's not surprising people like Bohr, uh, who was both a physicist and had strong philosophical interests, uh, was very puzzled by this kind of phenomenon. Right? This sort of complementary, uh, not not with an I, but with an E, like when uh, like a, a couple may be complementary in the sense that the the strengths of one. Uh, aid the couple uh, due to the weaknesses uh, of the other, and the other can have strengths that the, f the first person doesn't have. So the, the two together, they complement the knee, complement each other. So uh, it looks as though the properties of uh, the photon were also complementary. Like they had wave properties and particle-like properties, but you needed both to get a full description of the behavior of the electron. Right? Wave properties particle properties. Uh, the complementary nature of quantum systems. Right? Well, uh, de Bray, uh, he was thinking, well, if, uh, if waves, you know, light waves, can have particle properties, why not the other way around? Could, could particles have wave properties? Now, <laughs> Now, he wrote his PhD thesis on this idea, essentially, and his examiners, uh, French examiners, local, uh, thought this idea was so weird, they didn't know what to make of it. Uh, you know, do, do, they give, do they give de Broglie, this young man, do they give him his thesis and say, yeah, yeah, you're, you're one of the club now, uh, you can become a future professor? Or do they reject, reject his uh, main idea as totally crazy? Uh, you know, this is nuts. So they sent the thesis off to Einstein, who by that stage, in the 20s, uh, Einstein was a very big name by then. I mean, world famous, because uh, his general relativity had uh, come out in uh, 1915 and 1919. His prediction that light would bend as it approached the sun uh, was confirmed. So uh, Einstein was like a rock star. He was, he was super famous, right? He, he was a household name. So, uh, these uh, French examiners sent Einstein uh, de Broglie's thesis, and Einstein loved it. He thought, oh, you know, de Broglie has lifted the veil, as you know, 
poetic words like this, uh, the veil, you know, the, the obscurity of, you know, from physics. Uh, so, in a sense, what Einstein did to waves, in other words, gave them particle-like properties, de Broglie gave to particles, in other words, gave them wave-like properties. So, in a sense, you had a kind of completion of the complementarity between particles and waves. Right? That, that complementarity, you need both, you need a description of both, the particle-like properties and the wave-like properties together to get a complete description, well, you know, more complete description of what's going on in quantum phenomena, right? So, uh, and, a lot, and some people call these you know, wave-particle-like uh, properties, they, they call, call them wavicles, right? wave-like particles or particle-like waves, you know, just wavicles. And um, I'll just throw it at you, but uh, so if particles have wave-like properties, particles in some sense, and again, <laughs> interpretation, welcome to quantum mechanics, Particles have wavelengths, right? If they have wave-like properties, uh, characteristic of a wave is this wavelength. You know, how, how long is it for it to go up and down once? You know, there's one wavelength, right? What is the wavelength? And again, uh, so de Broglie used Planck's constant and divided by the momentum. Okay. So uh, if your the momentum of your particle is very high, in other words, p p is large, therefore the wavelength will be small. And uh, if you didn't know this already, the reason why um, particle accelerators are used, uh, been used for decades, is uh, if you want to penetrate tiny, tiny, tiny distances and see what's going on at those tiny scales, you need uh, uh, something to observe with, like light or whatever, with a very small wavelength, right? If, if your wavelength is larger, than the thing you're trying to look at, then you won't see it, right? The wavelength's too large. So, if you're going to use, for example, you're shooting electrons or protons or whatever at uh, targets, and these targets are very, very, very small, then the wavelength of the particle you're shooting at must be smaller than the thing you're looking at, right? Well, if the thing you're looking at is tiny, tiny, then that wavelength needs to be tiny, tiny. And hence, from uh, de Broglie's uh, famous formula, that means the momentum has to be very large. And so you use these particle accelerators to speed up these particles very, very fast, so they're approaching almost the speed of light, and hence their wavelength is very small, and then you can see things. Right? So, uh, 